Hi, I'm Don, and this is The Hobbyist Geek. Welcome back, y'all. Today we're doing something a little different. Uh, I would actually like to thank user uh, JVation69 for his suggestion of the Metal Earth Blue Angels FA18, excuse me, F8, yeah, FA18 Super Hornet. Obviously, I can't speak today. Um, but uh, yeah, he wrote that he was having a little difficulty with this, so I thought I would give it a try, and we're gonna try and make this one another instructional video, see if we can't help him out a little bit. Um, and I gotta tell you, from the packaging, this thing looks awesome. I am really looking forward to it. So why don't we bring you on in, we'll take a look at the packaging, and see what comes inside. Oh. Okay, for the packaging, we have this beautiful product image here, which absolutely looks awesome. Uh, you can actually see some of the tabs here, so this actually does look like it'll be a little bit larger than some of the other planes that we've done, uh, which perfectly fine by me. Uh, we have uh, a couple of uh, pieces poking through the window here, and just look at that paint. It's got that glitter effect that we've seen on a lot of the modern metal earth pieces uh, so that looks awesome and that blue clearly is just completely covering the piece absolutely incredible <clears throat> uh, looks like it's a 197th scale and we are looking at two sheets in here um, based on this it's actually like four sheets of your standard but since this is a premium series you know two of the larger sheets so no big there uh, we are looking at a 7 out of 10 difficulty. You gotta admit, that actually surprises me a little bit. Based on the images that I'm seeing, it doesn't look like it would be a 7 difficulty, but uh, who knows? I guess we'll find out as we get into it. Um, kind of small on the pieces though, only 45. Uh, so that's good. That's actually really good. I like that. Um, the actual Blue Angels in formation, because these guys are freaking great at what they do love it and uh while i am not a military man myself my father is a u.s navy veteran and i uh, am very 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 supportive of the armed services and the navy specifically so this well this is going to be great i may end up giving this to him when we are done but let's go ahead and open this up let's see what's inside Okay, just opening the package, we ran into our first problem. Uh, when they were sealing it and they applied the glue up here, they actually glued the metal to the paper. So getting it open was a lot more difficult than, than it typically is. But it's out now and it looks like the biggest damage is in this corner here where there is no piece. So I'm actually fine with that. Uh, as long as the actual pieces are intact, we are good. Um, taking a look, uh, that is awesome by the way. Love that laser etching on there. And this is tactile, man. That is, that's actually pretty deep. Holy crap, that's really nice. I love that. I don't see too much in the way of tiny pieces. Let's check this side. All right. Yeah, I mean, we got a couple of smaller pieces, but nothing tiny like in some of the other ones. This is gonna be interesting to shape. I can't wait to see what we do there. But for the most part, this doesn't look too bad. I don't know what that is. That's a pretty small one. And it looks like it's got several folds. Uh, we got a second one down here. All right, no, not too bad. Um, everything is this wonderful blue or yellow, uh, or in a couple of cases, um, black. But for the most part, blue and yellow. This looks like it's gonna be fun. Let's see what we got in terms of instructions. It looks like we've got two sheets of instructions here. Um, of course, our parts list and uh, your basic metal earth instructions. Nothing untoward there. They look about the right size compared to everything else. Not too big, not too small. So we should be good. Awesome. Let's see what tools we're gonna use today. All right, 
when it comes to uh, these metal models, these are your typical tools. Now, the top row whoop, are the required tools. These are the only ones you actually have to have in order to do the model. Um, we've got our snips for cutting the pieces out of the sprues. We've got a needle nose pair of tweezers and a flat nose pair of tweezers. And we've got our round stock um, for making cylinders and the like. And mine actually have these cones for cone shaped pieces. So that's awesome. The optional tools are below. You've got your magnifying glass, just in case you need it. You can see how dusty this is. I don't use it very often, but it is there. We've got slightly angled ooh, flat nose, and we've got this heavy angle flat nose tweezer just for getting into those corners. Got some needle nose pliers in case you have a, like a deep piece that you just can't seem to get to with the regular tweezers, some glue and toothpicks, just in case you really screw up somewhere, and a magnetic screwdriver uh, for picking up those tiny pieces, and the shaft can be used as round stock as well. So those are the tools that we're gonna be using here. Let's get some pieces cut out and get started. Actually, before we get started, uh, let's go over how to use the instructions, just in case uh, this is your first go and you don't know. Uh, these right here are the parts identifiers, okay? Uh, and you can see that the images match up with the sheets that you are given. And of course, each part is identified by number, uh, especially on pieces that have a lot of parts. You gotta be real careful to follow the lines properly. Sometimes they'll come down and angle out. This doesn't look like it's gonna be that complicated to identify what is what. When you see colored parts like this, that means they are duplicates. Only one of them is gonna be numbered. So uh, this one here is number 22. This is also 22, even though it has no number assigned to it. So nice and easy to read these. Now, Metal, Metal Earth is pretty good at numbering each piece in the order you need to assemble it. So if you take a look at the instructions, you can see we start with one, then we go on to two, um, there's three, four, and so on. Um, not all metal models are like that. Some of them, the parts list is just all over the place. But Metal Earth is pretty good. When you're looking through the uh, e is for the engraved side or the color side, basically the side you want to showcase in your display. And E is the back. That's just usually plain silver, and that is what people will not see. I'll go on the interior of your model. This is just when they want you to really pay attention to a step. Here is where you bend it. Whenever you see these little blue circles, you have to bend in a 90 degree like that. Um, and then the triangles are a twist. So the, the tab will stick through the hole and then you just twist it 90 degrees to lock it in place. I think typically these are more of a suggestion than a rule. Um, there are places where it is a rule. For example, if you have an interior point and a tab that comes out, ooh, sorry, I obviously didn't wash my hands very well. I'm gonna have to do that again. Been cutting the grass. Anyway, you got a tab that comes out and it's on the inside. So you're thinking, okay, well, I'm just gonna twist it, right? But then you've got another plate later in the instructions that'll go flat over it. So you'll want to bend it 90 degrees. So you'd really wanna pay attention and read ahead in the instructions to know where you can take liberties and where you can't. All right, that's enough talking. Let's get to some pieces. Okay, so we're gonna kick things off by building the cockpit interior and the nose of the vehicle. Uh, we're gonna kick, <laughs> start things with uh, part one here. Um, this is basically the seat back and top. Um, let me go here, all right. Now, <laughs> these guys are, uh, not gonna make life easy on us, are they? 
Okay, we want to start with the back here. Basically, you want to pull one side forward, just like this. Now, you want to take the top half here and you basically want to match it to this shape. There are some perforated lines in there to assist. So, should be doable in theory. So it should look a little something like that. Make sure to bring these little bits here forward a little bit. They're going to go in front of the seat interior and then we can bring the other side of this forward as well. Um, so we have an assembly that looks a little something like that. Then we're going to take part two. Alright. Wow. They really want this to be difficult, don't they? Alright, there's two little bends here, perforated areas. And you're going to want to kind of put an angle in. So it's a little something like this. And right in the center is the flight stick. Bring that forward and up, just like that. And you've got two slots on either side and two tabs here. So what we're going to want to do is slide the seat back in underneath the, I'm not sure what those are. There's uh, safety straps. Let's see if we can get this in there. And then tilt it up, get those tabs on the seat or on the bottom here into those tabs on the seat. All right, a little something like that. That was not fun. Anyway, then we're going to fold these tabs over to secure it. Just like that. And now we do a little touch up. So we're gonna push the seat back a little more so that it matches. I'm gonna bring these front panels down. Make sure our tabs are secure. And there you go. One pilot chair. Look at that. Now we're going to take part three. This is the interior. Now there's a lot of folds that have to happen here and then they want you to put stuff in. Now I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, so I'm going to break tradition on this just a little bit uh, and the first thing we're going to do is take whatever this piece is this this is a uh, part four and it's got two tabs on the bottom and this little stick coming up from the top i have no idea what this is but uh you want to fold the sides back to make them parallel And you end up with something that looks like this. Very small. There are two tabs coming out the bottom. 
And lo and behold, there's two tabs right here in part three for them to go into. So that's what we're gonna do. And these are twist. So we're not gonna fold these, we're gonna twist these. All right. So you got a little something that looks like that. Now it's time to put the chair in. So chair has three tabs on the bottom and there are three slots right here in the middle. So we're gonna do this and these are also twist. Look at that guys. I know it's really dark and probably hard to see, but that actually looks really cool. All right. Um, now, looks like it's time to start doing some of these folds. So we're gonna fold this side up and the top half over so that you got kind of a 90 degree angle there. Same on this side. These are large enough you could probably do them by hand, but I'm not gonna. Look at that. Look at that. We've got uh, two fold points here, so we want to put maybe a 45 degree angle on the first, and then another 45 on the second, so that it bends up. Looking like that. Here on the back, we actually have a lot of folds. So, First thing we're going to do is bring this up and this back. And then we're going to do the same thing on this one. Up and then back. 90 degree angles on those. We have an assembly that looks a lot like this. All right. <clears throat> Here's where we take part five. And it's got the tabs on the sides. Uh, this is actually the engraved side. I know it's showing up as silver with the light reflection, but it, it's not. And we're gonna bring all four of those tabs straight down 90 degree bend. All right, here's where things are gonna get fun, y'all. There are two slots right behind the seat. I don't know if they're coming up on camera. And then two more up top there. And that's where these tabs are gonna go. But of course, those slots are at different heights and this piece is not. So, let's see if we can't get this done. All right, so you can kinda of see it here on the backside a little bit. Um, my seat back is uh, pushing forward a little bit, so you might have caught me trying to correct that. Uh, so, there we go. Got it. Straighten out these straps. And, unless I am mistaken, we now have a fully assembled cockpit interior ready to rock and roll. All right, this next bit's gonna be difficult. Um, it's effectively got three segments. This is part six. Now up top here, we're gonna be trying to make a cone. This section is a cylinder, and then these have to be rolled into kind of a half cylinder with an open top. So we've basically got three different sections all built into one piece. And the worst part, in my opinion, is gonna be that right there because that is where the cone attaches to the rest of the fuselage. What's more is cones tend to be absolute pains to do. Uh, there are several ways to go about this. One, of course, have something with a cone on it that you can get in there. Now mine does not have a direct point, this is. And if you misalign these edges, it's not going to it's not going to look right. Another uh, this typically works on smaller cones. I've never actually tried it on one quite this large. I'm going to give it a shot here. 
is to effectively take your needle nose tweezers, line it up with one of the edges, grasp it, and then roll this edge to where you want it. Nice and slow. And turn it into a point. It actually doesn't look half bad. And we're going to try that on the other side. See if we can't get this thing to line up. Just do a little squeeze here. Kind of finish it off a little bit. And then we'll take our cone thing to ensure the base stays round while we do our squeezing. And look at that. That actually came out pretty nice. Pretty nice. And we did get a little bend here, so let's straighten that out. There we go. Now we're gonna use this to round out the cylinder. Bear in mind the cylinder is a bit larger than my uh, round stock here. So you don't wanna just round it around the stock. You wanna try and take into account just how large it is. There we go. Look at that. Okay, we don't want to close it off just yet. And you want to do want to try and make it easy, or excuse me, even as best you can. There we go. Look at that. Now we're gonna to have to round to these edges. Same basic concept. Don't worry about going too far or too little. I mean, you can always make corrections. That's the beauty of these models. Just don't make too big an error or require too many corrections because the metal will get weaker as you go. There we go. Things are looking pretty good. I will admit. They are definitely looking pretty good. All right, now we're gonna take the cockpit interior here. And there are two slots on the side and two more on the other. And that's where these tabs here and here are gonna go. So we're basically gonna do a little balancing act. And get these in. And there we go, we got all four tabs coming out the sides. That is beautiful. Now, we're gonna wanna fold them down. The paint is black on these tabs. Um, not blue, but that'll match better than that reflective shiny silver. So, I'm gonna fold them down, using my fingernails here for that. Uh, so it is in there nice and tight. Maybe do a little correction on some of the uh, curvature here, just to make it even, or as even as it can be. And now we've got to seal up the bottom. So effectively what we're gonna do is pry the bottom apart just a little bit. Get those tabs to slide right in. There are two. And so they'll slide in like that. And we'll wanna fold those over as well. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a fan of this tab because that blue tab kind of breaks up uh, the arrow here. 
There's just not a lot I can do about it. There's not too much clearance. There's not enough clearance in there to really get my tool in there to bend it over. So I don't like that. It is what it is though. All right. So with those in place, there's six tabs along the edge. We're gonna make, wanna make sure those tabs are basically poking up and not getting caught in anything like the seat. Like this one is. All right, now that we've got those tabs up, we get to build the rest of the cockpit. I can tell right now this is going to be a pain in the butt for this part, but it is eminently doable. So let's do it. All right. First thing first, I'm going to get down another piece of round stock here. All right. I'm going to use the cone on this to kind of round this backside a little bit. Um, it's not really going to be perfect because it's supposed to have a dome. You don't want to round it too, too much because you got to get on those tabs. So, you got a little something that looks like this. Now, right here has to be rounded as well. So, let's pull out the larger round stock. Let's round that off a little bit. And while we're at it, we'll round out the front just a little. Try and get it to look nice and neat. A little something like this. And there's no bend point or anything really. But what we're looking for is something... Eh, about uh, here, give or take. I'll bend this down. And then this will come up just a little bit. And these will come back. Look at that. Oh, nothing perfect, but it doesn't have to be right now. Now there's two tabs here on the front. We're gonna wanna bend those in. I probably bent those tabs a little too far, but that's okay. We will deal with it. Now we've got part eight here, and this also has to be rounded. So let me get, there it is, my larger round stock here. I'm gonna kind of cone it off just a little bit. Notice I'm not going all the way to the top, okay? Going like about here-ish, about halfway. Okay. So we've got a little something that looks like this. Now there's a slot on either side. That is where these two tabs on the inside go. So let's see if we can't get all that lined up. These are twist, by the way. This is what we are left with. And this is where the fun begins. You see, we've got all these tabs along the edge, or I should say slots, and that's where these six tabs are gonna go. So, what we're gonna wanna do is effectively try to slide these front two tabs in and then work our way back. Okay, and here we go. Now, 
Um, Want to note, these tabs here in the front, I had to fold down instead of up. It just wasn't holding properly otherwise. Uh, the ones in the middle, I did fold up so it doesn't break the line too much uh, on both sides. On the back, okay, on this side, I folded it down at first to hold it in place because I got this one in first. And then once I had this one in place, I was able to fold them both back up so that the blue paint matched with the blue portion of the cockpit here and it can hold. Now, unfortunately, I seem to have lost a little bit of the curve on this, so I'm gonna see what I can do about correcting that. There we go. And during the manipulations, this kept getting bent in and stuff, but that's okay. It's easy to correct and I have done so. Um, and now we are looking good. The only real issue I've got is this gap right here, which no amount of squeezing and manipulation seems to want to make it go away without having a negative impact. I mean, it's a little bit lesser right there. Uh, and it does seem a little off center. The cockpit does just a little bit. Um, yeah, actually that's better. All it takes is a little bit of manipulation, a little judicial force. Don't uh, go you know, too heavy handed, but a little judicial force. And you can get this thing looking just the way you want it. And with this in place, we've actually finished the first bit and we are ready to move on to the next section. All right, y'all, time to start building a little more of the fuselage. So we're gonna kick things off with part nine here. And this also kind of needs to be rolled into a kind of a semi cone to a, a bit of a point there at the end. So we're gonna get our round stock out. Start giving this thing some shape. And you can use different sizes of round stock as you go through these things. Try to keep uh, a bit level um, as you're going down it because this one does not have a cone at the end, uh, like a full cone. And oh. now if you end up with something like this, that looks like you have wings, okay, don't forget to get that round stock in there and round off the edges as well. Okay, you're looking for a semicircle, not a V. And if you need to, you can always get your tweezers in and do little manual adjustments on the edging. All right, that looks pretty good. And there are two slots right there. And we are gonna take part 10 here. We're really just gonna fold it in half. that and we're gonna plug it in this is a twist to make sure that uh, it is kind of angled off towards the pointy end here and then we'll get in here and we'll twist this tight go look at that all right next up we're gonna take uh, 11 here now this has two tabs 
in the middle. So make sure you get your tweezers in there and you push those tabs out before you really get started here. Okay, now you're gonna to wanna to roll this into a cylinder, but do not attach it at the bottom just yet. All right, that's pretty close. And you notice on the top, one side has a slot right here in the center. That is where this tab is gonna go. So we're gonna fold this tab straight down 90 degrees, just like that. Slot it in, just like this and then give it a nice twist to hold everything in place. Okay. And we can try to line everything up. Good, be goody goody. Okay, now that we've got this, we're gonna start building uh, a bit on the wings. So we're gonna take uh, part A here, or excuse me, part A, part 12, and all of these tabs along the edge, they all have to be folded down, again, about 90 degrees. Oops, except for these ones here on, this, on the yellow edge. Getting a little ahead of myself there, but all the blue tabs, Hold them down about 90 degrees. Doesn't have to be exact. All right, now we wanna take part 13 here. Now this is gonna be the fun one. Right here, there's actually a little bit of a break in it. And you only wanna fold down this outer triangle without twisting the rest. best you can. So it should look a little something like that. Okay. With that done, okay, these two tabs on the flat edge, those remain untouched. The rest of them all have to be folded down about 90 degrees again. All right. And with this, like this, we'll take part 12 and in this orientation yeah we got three tabs here and there are three slots right there so let's get those in now it's important to note these are folds not twists so I have a feeling we're gonna have a clearance issue if you do a twist okay and the good news is it's flat on the other side, so you can actually just use that for a flat surface to push everything down. And then use your tweezers to make sure you get a nice, tight hold. Booyah! Look at that. That looks gorgeous. All right, and now we're gonna take this onto the assembly we just built. And, yep, there are two slots right there and there. Uh, these two tabs are gonna go into those two slots and we're gonna give them a nice little twist. All right, we wanna make sure this remains on top, by the way. Um, at least for now. So spread it out if you have to but make sure that stays on top. Now, what we're gonna be doing is effectively repeating the procedure with parts 14 and 15. So let me do that. All right, now when we're putting this on, there's one other slot right here in the rear. That is for this tab right here. So that'll help keep everything aligned. And of course, make sure this stays where it's supposed to. So let's go ahead and get that in. All right, it's important to note that this tab right here is actually folded, not 
twisted. And now that we've got all that in place, we want to make sure that we've got this lined up just the way it is supposed to go. Oh, let's get this together. All right, we've got a little bit of a lip going underneath these pieces, but this stays on top so that it doesn't push through. And would you look at that? It looks gorgeous. Did get a little bit twisted there. So it's a little uneven, but we'll take care of that real quick. Boom. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, uh, <clears throat> there are four slots around the edge here. There are four tabs back here. So what we're going to do is we're going to bend these out about 90 degrees. I'm going to pop them into those slots. Now, when you get them in, these need to be folded. Which direction you fold them is your choice. Um, supposedly, you would fold them towards the rear because the blue paint is on here and it'll match a little better. But if you want a better hold, so it's a little more secure, you're going to want to bend them forward, but you are going to end up with some silver bits. I want the better hold, so that is what I'm going to do. While you're at it, you've got two tabs here that are going to go into these two slots there. Same basic concept. All right. Now, in my case, notice there's this gap here. Uh, that can be easily fixed by just applying some pressure. Okay. Um, just be gentle with it. You know, let's snap anything or push too far. It'll be nearly impossible to get it out if you do. But a little bit of pressure, you can get it in there. You may have to realign a few things here in the cockpit. Not end of the world stuff. And now it lines up pretty neat. Look at that. Things are definitely looking up here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm liking the way this is looking. I am so far. Let's see what comes next. Okay, it looks like we're going to be taking part 16 here. Now we're going to fold it in half. Um, you'll notice there's a tab here and a tab here. There's a slot here. So this tab needs to be folded over before we fold the piece. And the other one can remain straight and we'll fold it directly in half. This tab will go into this slot and we'll fold it over. And this tab is just going to fold around to hold everything in place. So you got this. Now there are four tabs here, and there are, lo and behold, four slots right there. So we're going to get those in, just like this, and they have to be folded, not twisted. You need to make sure you don't twist. What's more is there's two more slots here, so don't fold it over that slot. Perfect. <clears throat> And now we're going to do exactly the same thing for part 17. All right. Look at that. This thing is really coming together, isn't it? All right. Last but not least, we are going to roll this 
into a semicircle. And that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna take part 19 here and fold this top over 90 degrees. I'm gonna take part 20, and it's got two tabs on the top. There are two slots right here, so we can just push them through and then fold it. And there are four tabs on the bottom. There are four slots right here, so take a wild guess at where it's gonna go. And these are twist, so we're gonna twist them shut. There you have it, looking nice. Now we've got two tabs right here, and we've got two slots right here. On the underside, we have two tabs here, and we have two slots here. So take a wild guess of where everything's gonna go. Um, now, according to this, the tabs up here need to be folded. The tabs back here need to be twisted. So that's just kind of interesting. I would have... Uh, expected them all to be folded, but that's okay. It's okay. We're gonna start with the tabs on the front and try to get those in. There we go, just like that. Now we'll line up the tabs in the back. This should help hold things in place. Perfect. Perfect. And we'll fold this up. This one too. Give it a little squeeze because there's some gapping here again. So we'll just give it a little squeeze to line things up a little bit. There we go. Give these ones on the back a twist. Look at that. That looks beautiful. Now we still have these two tabs sticking out here. Don't know what's gonna go in them yet, but they are there. But this is coming along quite nice. We've got a nice fuselage, uh, mostly symmetrical. Mostly. Uh, same on the top, looking good. We got our tail fins here. It's looking pretty good. All right, let's see what's next. All right, uh, if you can believe it guys, we are almost done. These are the remaining pieces to finish this model off. Awesome. All right, next up, we have part 21 here. And the first thing we wanna do is roll uh, this section here. Um, now the, the, the curve actually comes to right about here. You do not want to curve these pieces out here. And then in this area, these are actually going to turn into full cylinders. So, uh, we're going to get out our trusty, um, uh, round stock here. I'm going to get to rolling. Now there is a tab here. Okay. There is a, there's actually two slots on this side, okay? But there's only one tab. That tab, definitely, uh, you wanna go, wanna get in there. And um, this time around, we're gonna do things a little bit differently. We're gonna fold this at 90 degrees now, so that when we roll it, uh, we can try to get it inside. So let's get the roll going. Okay, I'm gonna start doing this by hand now instead of using the stock uh, because we're gonna go for a clean connection point. So we're gonna roll this in, but we wanna make sure this part with the slot is, see how it's a little flat? 
That's actually fine. We'll be fixing that. And then we push them together. And the reason we push that tab in down is so that we can slot it in uh, while it is like this. Just like that. Get our tweezers in and fold the tab over so it'll stay. And now we can get our round stock in there and round it out again. Okay, get rid of those flat bits. So we have a nice round thruster. Okay, then we want to round off all of this just a bit. All right, now, at this point, they want us uh, to ah, get this fin. And again, we're gonna fold this in half. Just like so. We got four tabs here, and there are four slots. So we're gonna get those in and We want to twist them. So, you know what? I don't like the roll on that. I'm gonna I'm gonna push it out a little bit more. Get a little more roll on that outer edge. There we go. That looks better. Now we'll get these tabs in. We may have to pull it apart a little bit in order to uh, twist these. Properly. Yeah. There we go. With all those twisted in place, this thing is pretty static. And we will fold this back in. Get that roll going again. I'm gonna be honest, this uh, slot that's here, I don't know what's gonna go in there, if anything, but I'm keeping it on top just in case. <clears throat> now we take, uh, tweezers we're gonna bend this down there's a little slot here and a tab right there so we're gonna just bend it a little bit get that tab in that slot and then we will fold it over tighten her up we'll fold this down so it looks like this okay things are definitely coming along nicely now, we're gonna take part 23 here. We're gonna bend these forward, okay? Basically just gonna make a box. Look at that. Now, uh, let's take these tabs, there are two tabs there. We're gonna fold those out. Ninety degrees, give or take. All right. Now the slots here, you can see the one uh, on the interior 
Well, what will be the interior is a little higher, so you know which way this goes. We're basically just gonna be pushing this in. There we go, just like that. And then we will fold those tabs down. and pinch them to make sure that they stay put. And now we have an intake. Look at that. All right. Well, to finish this off, uh, this is going to fold over this way, just like this. And this tab here is gonna fold up. And it looks, it's really hard to tell, but it looks like this uh, little external piece here is gonna fold down. So let's fold that down. We got this tab facing up, awesome. All right, now we have a tab here and a tab here, two total tabs, and we've got part 24 here. Uh, and it looks, yeah, okay. So, got a slot, got a slot. We're just gonna kind of match them up, just like that. And these get folded as well. There you go. That looks gorgeous. All right, now we're gonna take the assembly that we've done so far and the one we just built, okay? Basically, we're gonna push this down on here. Uh, there are a ton of tabs. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight tabs. Now, it's important to note, one of those tabs is this one here in the center. That's probably going to be the hardest one to get aligned properly. And that's gonna go into this slot right here, okay? I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's where that's gonna go. Uh, everything else has got a slot that'll line up with it, and all of them will get folded in uh, so that we can hold everything in place appropriately. So I'm gonna start with the hardest one and then we'll line up the rest. Now that the hardest one is in. All right, and there you go, look at that. That actually looks really nice, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, <clears throat> not sure about this. But we're also not done yet. Um, so let's see how the rest of this plays out. Okay, y'all. So I read ahead in the instructions a little bit to try and figure out what was going on here. And now I know that little uh, slot that's right there. Okay. There's a tab on this one that's gonna end up going into that slot. Otherwise, these next four pieces are identical to this. So uh, I'm not gonna make you watch me go through them again. We'll just speed run through that. But, uh, but the final bit is this tab right here is gonna go into that slot somehow. So make sure you got enough clearance there for it. Uh, I should, and I will be back once I've got it all taken care of.
All right. There you have it. Um, not too bad. Not too bad at all, actually. Um, I thought getting that in was going to be much harder than it, than it ended up being. But uh, uh, I did have to fold this in a little more than I wanted to. But the good news is it's nice and hollow. You can get your tweezers in there and push it back out. Uh, back here... Um, these right here, you can do a little touch up if you want, fold them down a little more, get that going. But there is, no matter what you do, going to be a bit of a gap there, uh, no matter how you look at it. There's just no way to get that any better, um, which is unfortunate, to be honest. I, I would have liked to have seen that filled, um, but that's okay, it's okay. It's a model and it's looking pretty darn good. Uh, next up, uh, we're going to take part 28 here. And this is gonna go on the um, left wing, left wing. Uh, it's pretty obvious. We got four tabs here. There are four tabs in the center. Make sure the yellow is facing the interior like this. Just line them all up nice and neat. Uh, and these will be twisted. And for part 29, we're doing the same thing on the other side. All right, just like that. Uh, now for part 30, there are actually two of them. We're gonna do exactly the same thing for both. Basically, we're gonna bend these at 90 degrees so we get a little box. We're more like three sides of the box. And up at the top, there are some angled pieces. You can just push those little triangles in to turn it into a point. Just like that. Four tabs on this side. And There are four slots here, which we will be pushing them in and then folding them over. Now, these ones on the rear, there's just no way to fold those. Uh, so I don't know what particularly they want from us uh, other than leave them. Now the ones on the front should hold it anyway, but I'm gonna squeeze them in just to give it a little extra stability. And there's another triangle on that interior piece that you can fold over to complete the point. Uh, the rear of the missile or whatever this is on the side is going to remain open. So don't worry about that too much. But yeah, so the rear part here is going to remain open. Uh, and then we do the same thing on the other side. All right, and there you have it. And that, my friends, is actually it for the plane. The plane is done. Uh, the only thing left is to complete the base. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started right on that. Uh, so the next part we're gonna basically do twice. We've got part 31 here. And we're just gonna fold it into a square. Now, if you take a look after it's in square form, you've got one side where all of the pins line up and one side where two of them are at an angle. Uh, for the ones where they are at an angle, okay, you wanna kind of take the two straight ones and bend them a bit to match that angle as best you can. And then we're going to take part 32 here. 
And those four pins on the angled side are gonna go into the center of the piece. I don't know if you can see it, but there are two sets of holes, like a square in the center and a diamond on the outside. These tabs are going into the center pieces. All right, once they're in, you're gonna to wanna to twist them, not fold. Although I don't think it matters much so long as you fold them towards the inside, if that's the way you choose to go. All right, and then we're gonna take part 33 here. We're gonna make another box. All right. And that is going to go over the tabs we just did uh, and into the outer section. Now, if you wanna be nitpicky about it, you can put the seam on the lower end. I am, if I can manage it, just to hide it that little bit more, not that it matters. It is just a square. Well, I guess a rectangle, if you want to look at it that way. And these will also be twisted. All right. And with that in place, there are still four tabs at the bottom. Those will go into one of these two spots. Make sure that it's angled towards the navy symbol. And these will also be twisted. Just like that. And now we repeat the process. All right, and now we have these two there. We're gonna fold these edges down to make a solid base. And there you go, base is done. And to display it, you just take those two posts and you put them into the thrusters here. So just get this in just like that. And it should, I hope, yep, stay put. And there we go, we're all done. Oh, okay, and here is the completed model. Um, I wouldn't go and say that this is the best work I've ever done, uh, and it's certainly not my favorite piece, but it is certainly a very, very nice addition to the collection. Um, as far as, uh, how authentic it is to the actual, uh, Blue Angels, I'm going to move this up a little bit. Um, actual Blue Angels aircraft, uh, I can't say. Uh, I, I honestly don't have the experience or the knowledge to be able to make that comparison, but it certainly looks quite nice to me. Um, little issues 
which, you know, we covered some of them. I'll get into a few others uh, as uh, throughout the build that made it more difficult than it probably should have been. But uh, it is, it, I mean, it is what it is. It, it, it's, it's an airplane. Um, here, let's stop this and we'll bring it in and I'll show you what I mean. Now, one thing I do love is that the piece itself can come off the base and uh, you can well do what you want with it, which is nice. Base itself, beautiful Navy logo. Um, and it says America's Navy on it, which is awesome. I absolutely love it. Otherwise, not a whole lot to speak of on the base for the piece itself. Now, these uh, tail fins here, they're, they're not the most stable things in the world. They, you know, they don't flop around as many, as much as some of the others do that I've done, but these, see, they just don't want to stay and they're at the wrong angles. It's just, I don't like it. I, I do not like the way these things do that. Um, and there's not a lot that can be done about it, sadly. Um, the, uh, a little bit, to a lesser degree, same is true for these uh, wings here. Um, and I know I'm using the wrong terminology. Apologize to any pilots out there. <laughs> but it is what it is. Uh, I do like the little catch between the engines so that uh, it, it holds the rear together. But I think that probably should have been done a little bit better. Uh, because that's the only part that's held together. Uh, when you come down here, uh, you can kind of see, kind of see the intakes are a little bit off. Uh, they're not perfect, and there's definitely room for maneuvering. Uh, there's uh, gapping throughout here. I mean, I could fold this down, but there, you know, there's only so much metal there. It's it's going to gap, uh, no matter what I do. And I, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of that. Um, I do like the paint job, though. The paint job is great. You got the Blue Angels here. You got the U.S. Navy um, on there a couple times. And that blue is just spectacular. Uh, I love the little arrow here. Like this big arrow. <laughs> um, and I think the front actually came out quite nice. Uh, the cockpit is very fragile. You definitely don't want to hold it here, and you can already see it's uh, a little off-center, um, which, you know, not a whole lot of can be done given uh, the type of cockpit they chose. Instead of a solid piece, they wanted to leave it as a frame so that we could see the interior. And, uh, well, you know, that, that means that we're going to have some issues with the frame. It's, it's just the way it is. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. The interior of the cockpit is pretty monochrome. Man, that focus is just not doing it for me today, is it? Uh, that interior of the cockpit there is just... Very monochrome. That's better. That's better. Uh, and and doesn't give off a lot of detail. So I really don't think it was worth it, if I'm being honest, to to have the interior of the cockpit there because there's so little detail, uh, which is unfortunate. I think uh, I, th I really think that could have been done better, um, and it just wasn't. All in all, though, I mean it's still a good plane. Uh, it is uh, definitely a nice size. I will give it that. It is a good sized plane. Before I put it on the uh, stand again, um, you know, bring out some of the other pieces that we've done to give you an idea of the scale. So you can see it's significantly larger, eh, maybe twice as long as uh, some of these other pieces that we've done, um, very wide, obviously it's got the paint. That's the difference between the standard pieces and the, uh, premium series. And of course it's got this stand, which allows you to display it in this very dynamic 
pose, uh, which is just incredible. I do love the pose of having it in takeoff like that, which is just great. Um, that's really all I got to say about it. There's not much more I can say. I do hope the video was helpful to you. Um, and once again, I want to shout out and thank you to JVation69 for the suggestion. Uh, if anyone of if anyone else has a suggestion, please leave it in the comments. And I really hope you liked the video. If you did, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.